Okay. You won't find it there. Where? In, in, the, right. in the browser. Yeah, right? Yeah, the URL. hud.democracies.com. Yeah. Um, anyway. Sorry, the internet is going to look. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's what it has. Yeah. So you, what you see all of this is there are different democracies, and you can sort of get in there. And the idea is that we don't we stop creating silos because each democracy is now is a silo, right? And the users of one democracy are only participating in one democracy. But what, what I would like to see is for me to come to Paris, for example, and just check what democracy are, are being used here and be able to participate. Like, why are we still restricting this to a territorial scale? It's, um, it's, that's a hand. Um, so that's what that's we want to achieve. We want to achieve like one sort of, yes? Um, common, um, so that you can create one user and with one user, sort of, you know, participate in any sort of democracy. Yes. So, questions so far? All right. Yep. Uh, how do you uh, create a uh, community which is representative of all the citizens instead of only people who actually are interested in the future of the Um. That's a good question. I think that um, and something that we were talking about before, like um, sort of working with governments, working with existing sort of institutions, it's also helpful from that perspective because they have sort of the ability to bring these ideas into the mainstream very quickly. Um, it's obviously risky and, and, you know, you need to sort of have your alerts, but um, but I think that that's 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 a good way of doing it. And also, like what we found in in, in our own democracies in Argentina, is that like, the issues that affect our everyday lives are the issues that get most traction. So, I don't know, urban development, for example, or, or things that that they are sort of common sense and that you know that affect you every single day. Like starting by those issues is a really good way of. Um, of starting to gain traction. Also, we need to understand that this is like the challenge is, is not technological, right? This is the easy bit. The challenge is that it's cultural. Um, and so, like, as, as, I, as I was saying before, like, we're not used to participating because we've never done it. And, and we think we can't do it because we're simply not allowed to. So, like, until we shed that notion that we are not allowed to make decisions for ourselves. Like we're never gonna do it, and I'm very sort of. I have a vision like the only way is is by doing it. So the only way of us knowing that we can make decisions about how we can how we want to govern ourselves is by making those decisions. Like there's no other way because in theory it doesn't it doesn't happen. So we need to start opening spaces for engagement and participation that have real impact, and and it's a learning curve. And we need to learn how to do it. We need to learn how to be engage responsible citizens that make decisions that affect everyone. Um. So, I was having your answer, if you use your name, it's to get everyone on the procedures. And everyone is there and it's I mean, our, our, our aim, as in long term, is to, is to rebuild political institutions. So it's to simply rethink how we can, um, what's representation, and, and how we're going to make decisions that affect our lives. Um, if that's democracy, yes, and, and it works, yes, definitely. Um, but I think this is an experiment as well. I think that this is not the answer to everything. It's just opening the questions that I think we need, we need to ask ourselves. Yeah. When you present to the officials, you say, do you say the population has voted this way, or do you say the user of the most of the US has voted this way, has voted this way? If you say so, do you read some kind of um, statistical balance? No, we don't. We, I mean, we say the citizens who participated voted that way. Um, we do not claim to be representative of everyone in the city. I mean, that would be ideal. We're working now 
on um, on a project with a city in Florida, in the US. It's a, it's a small city. They have, I think it's like uh, the, the voting population is 20,000 people. And the mayor of the city, who's younger than me, he wants to do, um, he wants to use democracy. So um, what he's doing is he's, he's, he, I mean, he used this system that is very simple, where he sends everyone who lives in this city a, a, a mail by the mail a token a number right and then they create their user with that number so you know that everyone who's voting is actually registered to vote it's a, it's a member of that, that constituency and um and then you can sort of claim some more legitimacy on the decision like i would really like i mean i'm very interested in that project i want to know how it pans out um because i think that that's a very fair question and if we you can Again, if you can get someone in the political system involved, then what it does is like it, it sort of raises the, the chances of, of more citizens engaging, and that sort of brings more legitimacy into the system. You need a special database for each city with each city that is going Yeah, well, yeah, what we're doing now, yes. I mean, potentially, what we can build. Um, and, this is getting into 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 blockchain and, and other sort of technologies but but the, the solution the pragmatic solution that we have now for cities is that that's one solution if, if there are other cities like i don't know helsinki for example where we did a project there that everyone's registered sort of online everyone has a digital id so it's much easier you just connect it to the api of the city and that's it but it depends on the context like in argentina that no one has a digital anything so yeah, you can choose. You can choose to keep it open. Yeah, in in Buenos Aires we did that. In Buenos Aires we kept it open. Anyone could, you could vote for from here. Like it doesn't really matter. We didn't. We, we didn't. I mean, that, that's always an option. Obviously, that can happen. There are sort of safeguards that you can build in the technology to do it. So, for example, you can give full voting rights after three weeks or whatever. It's it's not it's not complicated. I mean, you can you can think about it. A deliberative voting. I think so. Yeah. But what, 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 if from what? Um, that's, um, well, so that's bringing in statistical things, more like the jury. Oh. Make sure oh, yeah. that your demographics represent young yeah. people, old people, in all different backgrounds. It's a really nice data. Like from, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you can see that. Yeah. And that way you can do small pilots where you ensure that the results of democracy are isn't skewed towards. Why yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there's always, a, 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 um, as with any any technology, there's always a decision to be made in terms of how much data you want to gather from, you know, the citizens and how, you know, because on the other hand, yes, it would be absolutely phenomenal to say, like, what's your demographic, but at the same time, you, you might be creating profiling. So, you know, there's always like a, a balance that you need to just strike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh great, hi! Awesome, you guys rock! <laughs> yep. Yep.
Like delegate on someone. Um, okay, so with um, anonymity, um, so okay, so our our approach, the one we took now, because it's the only thing. I mean, we, that's a problem that no one solved yet. So we're not going to solve it. Like, or we're not going to solve it now. Like, we don't have the tools to do it. So um, until someone finally solves that, um, what we decided to do was to keep it open. So every action is um, is public. Sort of, and every vote is sort of, you know, every comment and every is public, it's, it's public. The reason why we made that decision and we don't allow for um, fake accounts or avatars or things like that is because, like, we want to we, we, we want to try to produce the sort of most um, civic possible debates and healthy debates and sometimes we were fearful of bringing the logic of how we discuss in Facebook, for example, or how you discuss when, you know, behind an anonymous account. Like we didn't want to bring that sort of trolling into democracy OS. And, and yes, maybe there are in certain issues that some users, some citizens cannot participate because they're fearful of the consequences. Um, but um, that's you know, in most cases, they will be able to. And if sometimes happens, like we understand that that's the best we can do right now. Um, we are sort of starting to um, to collaborate with Tor and to, to see if we can find a way of, of sort of, and, and, and also again, blockchain seems like a really good technology to help with that. Like we could have sort of encrypt, you know, encryption of the, the user, but the vote still be, publicly accounted for, which is one of the major issues that we have, like how do you build accountability? Because also the problem is that imagine if you participate in this discussion and you vote um, and you lost and you lose. And the only thing you see is, oh, you lost by, you know, 30% voted the other way. But no one, you can't have access to that information. You can't count the votes. So why would you trust the system? And so um, technologies like the blockchain can make this system accountable and trustworthy while keeping a certain degree of anonymity and better than what we have right now. So that's something that we are sort of looking into integrating democracy as with them, with the blockchain. And your second question uh, regarding um, populism. Um, I think that maybe, um, I think that uh, it might happen at the beginning. Like we didn't see it happening in our experiences so far. It might happen, um, but I think it's also sort of growing pains. Like we still need to iterate and we need to experiment. And if that happens, we need to find ways of correcting, building the sort of the necessary provisions into the system to prevent that from happening. So for example, one of the ideas that we we're having is having competing tags, right, with, with delegation, you, if, you, if you have a set number of tags, the one who, so someone owns, so someone, for example, has a lot of votes on one particular, he basically owns that tag, right? And there are a couple of very important tags, like budget. Budget is a big one, right? So the guy or the, the user who owns the most delegate, um, the most votes delegated on the tag budget, basically runs the show. Mm -hmm. But by allowing competing tags, so people to create their own tags, you can sort of diffuse that instead of producing like different poles of, of power. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said populism. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't understand. Yeah. So why would you have a person? Uh, Answer, guys. Yeah. One aspect of uh, this democracy, which is called 
need to understand. That means you tend to vote for someone who can have a dialogue. So rather than just clicking vote, which is uh, subject to populism, we can ensure that there's lots of conversation, lots of debate at each step. And the most debate thing is, less likely there is to be a populist in the <laughs> yeah, of course, but you, I get it. And, and in Argentina, we get that asked all the time as well. You can build provisions up about it. You can, you can obviously say, I mean, there's a reason why we do not vote on human rights because we are taking that from the hands of you know the majority. There's a reason why, and and we can build that in this system. Like we can say, like we wouldn't, you know. We wouldn't subject to to vote anything that has to do with affecting minorities or human. We, we can take that away from the hands of a majoritarian um, and vote, and I don't see why we couldn't do that. I mean, again, it's like what you said: it's the system. Like we need to build the same provisions that if, with any other sort of democratic system of government. So Yeah, that's that's what is uh, why exactly that's 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 why we cannot think of democracy as a system to aggregate numbers or preferences on votes on. Like we need to build in the debate component. That it's the most important value of democracy, and that's the, the value that's been overlooked in in this system. Like the system that we have right now, the democracy is simply a system that assigns sort of power between professional citizens. That's basically it, right? We, we do not have the values of of deliberation and participation in our democratic systems anymore. So how do we bring that back? I think that it's a, it's a very fair point. Like we need to start building this, opening these spaces for engagement and deliberation. Yeah. I see simply the convincing that uh, people are present. I get more to by the people doing what they do. No, I think that, um, I mean, the difference would be that the day he votes something that you don't agree with, you just withdraw your vote. You can't do it now. So now you can't, sort of, you vote someone in power, and they're there. And they make decisions in your name for four years, right? They're part of that. So in, 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 in a liquid democracy system, and in, in, in a different sort of system of representation, you can get an alert saying like, you know, your representative is going to vote like this. Do you agree or not? And I said like, no, you know what? I think that these guys are fake. It's a phony. He's really, he's just show off his TV material. But again, like we, I mean, I understand that there's a, dis, a, a mistrust in citizens making decisions, in everyone making a decision. But I think that we need to start this is practice. Like we need to start 
making those decisions in order to learn how to make those decisions. Like if not, like we're never gonna be ready. Like I get this question all the time, like, but, but how do we trust it? Why, why would you trust citizens to decide? And I'm like, well, I mean, that's the wrong question. The question is how do we build, how do we design institutions, right? That pre I'm very happy with that. Mm -hmm. So I can be model and I see what the ability to uh in the model. Yeah. So that tells me that the goals can be I need to know Yes, of, yes, absolutely. So so again, going back to the anonymity, it's it's a very complex issue because one of the things that we are then that's a great point. One of the things that we're thinking of is um if you want to receive votes, delegations, your vote has to be public. You know, and uh, and your identity needs a higher level of validation. And 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 the beauty of of, of sort of new technologies like the blockchain, for example, or, or decentralized technologies, is that you can not build all of these um, uh, um, not provisions. What the word I'm looking for? Um, well, not provisions into the delegation. So for example, I delegate on you, right? And because you accepted my delegation, your vote has to be public. But you also need to be able to opt out of voting publicly on an issue. But you know, there's um, a provision in our sort of contract, think about this as a contract, that says that if you want to vote anonymously, you can, but that you cannot vote for me, for me in my name. So, so the possibilities that we have right now with the technology that we have are endless. And that's that's the beauty of it. So the way I see it is like when a group of um, really amazing people sat down and figure out uh, the system that we have right now of government, they were having these conversations. These conversations, but institutions are created and are designed based on the existing technology and values of their time. Well, technology, technology change. And with that sort of change in technology, values change. So we need to rehab this conversation, right? Have this conversation again and say like, okay, so what institutions do we want to build? What are we gonna design? And how are we gonna design it? How are we gonna, what are the values of our time, the values of our generation, the values of this century that we want to build into a new institution? Because if not, we're just being governed by institutions that we inherited. And we're being just sitting back. They are saying like, oh yeah, some guy thought about this 200 years ago, but we're still having it, you know? But we can rethink it. We, we own our institutions. They don't own us. It's the other way around. Everyone agrees, right? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, okay. That's it? No, right. How do you manage debates at a city level? I know, it gets really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so one of the things that, so a couple of things we're thinking on that, uh, and, and again, like, guys, this, I do not have all the answers, like, seriously, like, what, we are all building this together, so, um, so sorry if I don't have answers for some of your questions, um, but on that subject, what we're trying to do is, um, we're thinking about a couple of things, so first, how do we reward the best argument, so having the system vote, a, a vote and down vote, the good arguments and the bad arguments, so have the best arguments float. So that's that's one of the of the features. Another thing is maybe redesigning democracy as to have um, a for argument and against, sort of a space that is for the arguments in favor and, and a space that is for the arguments against. So you can sort of at least you can know sort of what the arguments, um, how they are how they are divided and who's thinking and um, what. Um, so that's another thing that we are we are looking into. Something else that we're looking into as well is, and this is a very nice little detail. Sometimes um, forcing certain things in the system can avoid some sort of um, animosity or, or trolling. So we're thinking of 
when you reply to an argument, in general, your um, negativity or your sort of um, your animosity, it's it's built into the argument. It's built into what you're saying. So, but what if we try to take that away from the argument itself? So, we, you would reply to an argument and you would say, choose between this is an argument in favor of your argument or this is an argument against your argument and these are the reasons. So the sort of the, the aggressiveness, it's, it's in that bit and we got that out of the way ourselves, like the, the system. And then you need to state your reasons. So trying to figure out those sort of mechanisms and designs that uh, help us bring bring out the best arguments. It's, um, it's, it's I think it's, 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 it's they're design decisions. And, um, and we're looking into those sort of things. Something else that would help as well is, um, and we, we see this in, in Reddit a lot, if we if we have the sort of these are the arguments in favor and the arguments again, and then you you know that a certain with time you know that users how they think about certain topics right. So if suddenly they start voting in a completely different way or they start arguing for another way, you can, you can sort of see trolling happening. You can identify trolling happening. Um, you can also build um, alerts in the system where if you flag comments or if five different people flag the same comment as abuse or as a trolling, you, you don't take it out of the discussion, but you allow for filtering. So for example, I would have, I would only read the um, debate with the trolling filter in zero because I can't stand them. But someone else might want to read all the comments, right? So you can see all comments in that thread, including the ones that were marked as trolling. So. What I'm trying to say is that we need to try and, and build this um, in a way that the systems sort of regulate itself. Um, Yeah, let's see. Mind the two questions. And I will have this, and uh, the everybody votes, but sometimes when the leader is a good leader, he still choose to follow the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. Have you about the moral yeah, I have a lot. And, and the reason I have it is because I run myself. So if, if I hadn't thought about that, it would be, um, I wouldn't be <laughs> sort of on intellectually honest. Um, so I'll tell you what I think about it. That doesn't, and this is extremely personal because each and every one of the candidates of the net party should be able to answer this question to you. Um, the reason I, I, I decided to run with this um, public pledge was because I thought that I could at least give the battle for what I was thinking in, in, this, in this platform. I could, I, I could try and debate and try to convince as many people as possible. Um, and also something else that I could do, if, if that moment came where I had to vote with something that I disagree with, I could publicly state that. I could say like, I don't, you know, my preference is to vote for another way, but I have, you know, um, 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 a public pledge that for me is more important, that, that relates to, to, to this idea, to the net party, to this community. And I understand that it takes a very special kind of person to do that, but I was absolutely, um, like I was sure that that was what I was going to do. Like, no other political party would allow me to do that. How political parties normally work, there is a party line, and you have to vote according to the party line, and that's the end of the story. And don't even go on the press saying something different. So for me, that being part of a movement that was allowing us to to try to build a consensus and try to um, at least try to tap on a distributed knowledge in society and build collective intelligence, it, it's worth me saying if that if that was the case, you know, me voting according to what citizens decide and not according to what I personally think. And I I, I I understand the dilemma and I understand that it's 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 highly polemic what I'm saying. Um but at that point in time and at this point in time, I think that what we need to do is to kick start and and force a debate about the type of representation that we have.
we can't just keep living under the institutions that we're living. And the way that we found to doing it was building that political party. Yeah, that's a good question. As far as I understand, it's a uh, debate platform where you are well, the, the hub of democracy as is intended to do that. It's intending for anyone to build their own proposals. So we started with a very top-down approach, um, um, but. The, the, the idea of the of the hub of the software as a service is that allow for that bottom up approach that you can you know make any proposal. One idea that we played with for a while that we we like we don't have the resources to do it was to build a, a feature where you can so for example there's a bill being this discussed in Congress about a certain topic. So I could sort of branch out, so copy that bill, literally to branch that bill and make any changes that I want on that bill. And so saying like, this is my version of what's being discussed and try to get people engaged with my version. So that's a, a little bit like GitHub work. So, so that's, um, that's a, a, a nice idea. We need to build more of those things into um, democracy as I think, definitely. But for the moment, our pragmatic solution was allowing for anyone to open up a topic for discussion. Everything wanna be, yeah? Um, let's say, you have uh, actually a political party that is able to kind of implement this, you know, the people who are in the platform in the parliament or like in a more official public way, let's say. But how can we do if we don't have this type of uh, uh, communication to the, the institutions? Yes, yeah. uh, how can we actually, uh, how can people in the platform Kind of understand that their actions are uh, make sense. Do, I know do make sense, or I'm not just this. I know it's um it's a it's a very valid valid um question. That's why when we started, I was saying like try to find a good success story because that will make your platform sort of uh, more attractive and 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 trustworthy. Um, I think that it's a matter of of I mean the. The big idea is to be something like Creative Commons, right? Creative Commons just appeared as an alternative system and it gained so much traction that it, it became the system by default, right? And so um, we can do that. Instead of trying to fight the existing system and try to take the role that we took that was trying to sort of negotiate with the system somehow and sort of hack it, you can just build an alternative and bring people to that alternative. And then that alternative can slowly become the de facto sort of um, system. For example, in the US, and this wouldn't happen in Argentina, but in the US, like 30% of the population votes. That's nothing. So if you manage to have one in one city, one state, over 30% of the population discussing in democracy as, like, which system is more legitimate? You know, so, tr so try to do that and then try to become the alternative just by, by being it. Um, the challenge is that engagement, obviously, that's the elephant in the room. Um, yeah. Hmm. Good question. You've been to Burning Man? Yep. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyone, just take a pick. You want to ask something? <laughs> Oh, someone else, yeah. So, uh, when you tell me your biggest thing is to... <coughs> to, to what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I think you your, this is very good idea, and you need a very good tool that you don't need to do it. Uh, I think it's not Well, the, the, so, yeah. So, maybe, so, what is the next step? The next step uh, to uh, invite the people of the country to uh, uh, take into account your ideas, our ideas, and uh, to have it in the real world, not only in the 
Yeah. So again, what we did was we built, we built a political party. Like that's what we did. Yes, so yeah, so but you're changing, but 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 we are bringing a new logic to to that institution. It's a it's a way of forcing the political system to open up. So you have two ways. You either try to fight, or three. You try to fight the political system, like you can be anti-system. That's one option, and try to say this does, doesn't work and sort of go the revolutionary road. Um, you can um, try to hack the system, which is what we tried to do. That was our attempt. Um, or you can build a model that renders the old model obsolete. But I mean, I can't. I can't imagine another another road. If you have an, another one, I'll be happy to hear. But that's sort of what the only three alternatives. And it depends on the context, I guess. And it depends on like I wouldn't go the revolutionary road. Like we've seen that during the whole 20th century, it just doesn't doesn't work. Like it only brings violence. And and we also saw what happened with the Arab Spring. Like a lot of people on the streets, a lot of, and it, in Egypt, it created a huge power vacuum because the problem was that we were sort of, we are all together in what we do not like or want, but no one is talking about what we build afterwards. And so what you do is you create, you, you, you sort of undermine the existing institutions, which is a very good thing if you want to change them. But if you do not propose anything else, then you just leave the space open for the military or radicalized groups to take over. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit weary or... or uh, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Sorry for, I mean, uh, if you're not doing it in French, like, I'll understand. Yeah, so I might not be able to reply. I will maybe try to propose something. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm a bit sort of concerned with the sort of uh, refounding, refoundational sort of approach. Um, I think that. Let leads to um, sort of a sort of um, authoritarianism, most probably, or populism. Like the whole sort of the system is wrong. This is what we have to do. Like the 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 illuminated avant-garde uh, approach. Um, I'm a bit fearful of that. Again, I think we've we've seen it before. Um, so that's why the road we took is the road we we took, and and but. If, like what I would try and do now is to build an alternative system that just ignores the existing one, like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is that. Bitcoin is an alternative protocol to transfer value that simply ignores, completely ignores the existing system. It has its, it, it obviously it has its, its disadvantages and it has a lot of sort of issues. And I'm happy to discuss Bitcoin another. But conceptually, what I'm trying to say is that let's build something that makes the existing system just Old, yeah. Mm, maybe it's. Maybe. I think if you if you think of industry, if you think of the state as an industry such as taxis, for example, it's been completely disrupted with um, with like uh, Uber. The service is better, and if you think as the state is the same thing, 
then you need to come up with a better service, and then I think people will kind of naturally choose this, this option. And to me, this, that's one yeah. big. Um, yeah, I mean, what we need to sort of understand as well from the battle that we're fighting is that the elephant in the room is power here. And, and the reason why um, the existing system has all the, the incentives to defend itself is because it's in power. And the nature of power is conservative. They want to stay in power. That's just how it works. Like, they do not want to open up and devolve power. So um, they have all the incentives to do that. And so we, we also need to understand that we're not creating a new sort of, we're not the, you know disrupting uh, education. We are, we are talking about power, and that's a much more profound and difficult um, battle that we have ahead. But it's the one that matters. Like, if I have to pick one battle, it would be this one. Definitely. Right. Uh, yeah. That's a great question. So, um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I told you I don't have all the answers. I think that um, there's um, the director of the Institute for the Future, Marina Gorbis, she wrote this really nice piece on the future of government, where she proposes um, to, to sort of build a new system of government that it's um, like an agora of the, of the Greek, um, where those in power are, are picked randomly, sort of on a lottery system, right? So the beauty of it is that um, if we pick our representatives in a lottery system, the system, like we are all very, very, very much concerned about how everyone is educated, right? And how everyone is prepared to make those decisions, um, which is my whole point about the institutions producing a certain kind of citizen. Right? Um, and, and, and what she proposes is that, or, what, or her argument is that with the technology that we have today, we can sort of very easily sort of um, bring all of these new representatives, like Agora representatives, um, pair them with experts that they show models about, you know, what they are, sort of the consequences of certain budgetary decisions. And like, we have that, that opportunity to have much better sort of access to that information. So um, another really interesting um, book, if, if you want to, if you're interested in this, is um, The Liberation Day by Jane Fish, Fishkin and Ackerman. So what they propose is to do, and what was deliberative polling, I think is what you were referring to, is to um, have a representative sort of group of citizens deciding on issues. But when they wrote this, the internet didn't exist. Like nowadays, we can revisit that with, with the technology that we have. I think it's a really, really interesting exercise to revisit that idea with the technology that we have today. Yeah, by lots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's my fault, guys. And Oh my god. <laughs> They're gonna kick me out of the country. <laughs> um um I have no idea. Like just, I don't even know what to say. Um I guess what we what we are trying to do are, are sort of humble um project is to enable to bring the tools like or at least produce some tools for, for other people to use. Well, we, we did a, do you have a, you can, do you have, have you seen our, um, yeah, uh, yeah, you, 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 
you should read that one. That's <laughs> really good. Um, we, we built a Trojan, Trojan horse, like a big, real horse made of wood that was four meters long and five meters tall. It was huge. If, and maybe we can find a picture. Have you seen our Trojan horse? Maybe Facebook, but you love it. Anyway, so we built that and we campaigned on the streets with that horse. Um, and the idea was that uh, we were playing, obviously, with the sort of the idea of a Trojan sort of getting into a system, etc. Um, and we had like um, a, a recording saying that the horse was had in its belly the ideas of thousands of citizens who also wanted to be part of the of the process. And we rocked up to Congress with that horse and a whole sort of group of people and. You know, we, we created a lot of, of buzz and we were a lot in the media and, and that's how we started sort of, you know, um, bringing more people onto, onto yeah, that, that's it, huge, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And, um, um, and, and we got a lot of press from that and we got a lot of people onto the platform and that's how we got the attention as well, like just being creative, like with whatever tools we had. But that, of course, brought us a lot of, um, of people. Like a lot of traction, yeah. So I don't know, build the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I would ship ours because we still have it and we don't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Until the next campaign. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm wondering now we are making a political part. Mm -hmm. We are ministers of the city and the political part. Mm -hmm. And uh, the political question is how do we make people do the street change the political part? This is a bit difficult. Now it's a physical thing. Yeah, so we campaigned. We, we yeah, so literally campaigned. We campaigned with the classical yeah. No, we didn't pay for anything, trust me. We were very poor. Yes, absolutely. Well, the liquid, I think that the liquid democracy feature that we're building can actually be how you build political parties in the future. Yes, definitely. Like, I would, I, I really, like, I trust me, like, going through the nightmare of building a political party, it's awful. Like, you need to deal with judges and, and signatures and the justice system that it's in a sort of underground cellar that no one wants to go. Like, I have pictures of, like, they have like plastic, you know, cans and, and paper everywhere. It's like oh, it's awful. Um, don't do that, <laughs> right? Um, the the liquid democracy service, or I don't want to call it app, but sort of service that we're building, maybe will allow for that. Will allow for building new political parties. We are actually thinking of calling that the net party, like the way of of, of distributing sort of power and allocating votes. For issues and types. But you make my mother. My mother is. Well, I'll invite her for a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. Look, I, 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 I completely understand. Um, we try to do it as simple as possible and as intuitive as possible. And and democracy is pretty simple. Like you, you, it's really not very. It's not a complex tool. We were always very aware that we try, we're trying to reach. We don't know what to preach to the converted, right? And there's a lot of sort of effort that we are willing to to make because we are early adopters. Like, and I think everyone in this room has the same. But your mother is not willing to do, you know. And uh, it's very simple. And um, so yes, there are a lot of design sort of um, decisions from that perspective. Um, but also, I think that as on a more sort of medium term as millennials start sort of coming of age. And, you know, today the millennials are sort of the largest generation ever in history. 
in terms of number of people in the world. And, and, and they're very technological, this savvy. So I think that, it's, that, that there is an issue with generation. There's also an issue with um, socioeconomic access to, um, to, the, to these kind of tools. I think that smartphones, for example, and really cheap smartphone options are making that easier. Like in, in Kenya, for example, in Kenya, 25% of the GDP is transacted using um, uh, mobile phones. So, you know, like, again, it's, we, we need to try to see a little bit in the sort of long, long term. But uh, I'm pretty sure I can convince your mother, though. But if you give me five minutes with her. <laughs> Yeah, just decide yourself. I'm not the illustrated di dictator in this one. We do. Um, we we have very little because we don't gather that data. Um, but we know uh, um, sort of where the traffic is coming from and and things like that. Um, we should. We're gonna get better with that because I think it's important for us to understand better our demographic. Um, we know which democracies are more successful, and um, we are now trying. We are now measuring retention and return level, which is also important. Um, but yeah, we need to work harder on that aspect. Um, <laughs> yeah. About leadership? Um, I agree with the importance of leadership. Um, I used to think that part of the problem that we had in democracies, in our democracies, was, was that the most prepared or the most sort of educated and um, people wouldn't go into the political system because it was really nasty and awful and horrible, and they would just go into the private sector, for example. And so I, I used to think that it was a matter of leadership. And I worked for, for a couple of years, actually, in um, leaders, democratic leadership training program. Um, but I changed my mind. And I think that it's not a matter of leadership, it's a matter of the system. So it doesn't really matter who you who gets there. The system has all the wrong incentives. So it doesn't matter how perfect you are, the system forces you to make the decisions um, that are, are made. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have leadership. What I'm saying is what sort of leadership we want to have. And so if we, if we try to build um, a system where those who are rewarded are the better leaders, and, and, and it's emerging, we have emerging leadership sort of bottom up, and they're, much more, um, they're, hold, they're being held much more accountable because you know, I have much more power and control over my, my decisions. And I think we might create better leadership than what we have right now. But I'm, I'm, I, I agree with you. I agree in the importance of leadership. That's why we built the uh, liquid democracy feature in Democracy S, because we want to be able to, to do that, to delegate votes according to knowledge and experience and reputation. Yeah, exactly. Some decisions you might want, for instance, not to make all the time, like environmental long term policy, but now for we could use it for democracy to elect judges who are in turn for a long period of time. So you have the flexibility, it's just a tool, and such 
deliberately how often you have to take them out, how often you have to take them out, in which way you need it. Like a build tracker, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. We have one. I mean, we don't use it, but um, we built it for a project. If, if, if you want the also, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the source code is in, in, in the democracy, yes? like it tracks the progress of bills. Yeah. So that's one, one way of doing it, one avenue. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that we use the tracker? No. No, I'm not for, sorry, I'm not. No, I mean, you want to use the, the, I don't know, if you build it, I think that it will support the, the protocol level from the application. Well, I mean, in in the short term, the, 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 you need to find a way of connecting it to the political yeah. system. So you need to build those systems offline. Like in the long term, what we're thinking is that even with, with blockchain, for example, you can have um, triggers, right? So if a certain decision hits a yes, then it triggers the budget for that decision on, in Bitcoins automatically, for example. Yeah, so no, yeah, you, but, but that, that, this is what we yeah, need yeah, to yeah. think. So like, very, very exactly, yeah, but you know, we're here to think you know, long term as well. So um, you, you, could, you could try and do that, right? Um, so, oh yeah, well, that's a slight <laughs> matter. Or no, or you can build an alternative system and render the constitution <laughs> old. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. Inside any organization that it's not sort of a city council, you could, you could do that. Um, but at the moment, if, if you want to have executive decisions, you need to bring the council on board and convince them to do that. Yeah. Even, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And then nothing happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that, that's. Yeah, no, I agree. That's um, that can be built, but it's it very particular of of of, of a, the level of government, or because it, it it changes with. Like we did a very generic tracker. Um, but that's sort of a starting point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yes, uh, we did, and we called them in Spanish conversatorios. They are like conversational spaces. Um, we did a couple in, in in Buenos Aires. We have a couple more planned for this year. That's very important. Like to try to to do offline on online offline sort of combination of protocols. Yeah, um, we did it for one particular project that was very polemic, um, and we ended up projecting the decision on a huge monument in the middle of the park that they wanted to tear down to build a shopping center. And um, um, so you can do a lot of like, again with like with the course, right? With this idea of how you campaign, like they are political acts, right? And you and you and you also need to do that. You need to sort of make those sort of <laughs> offline re, sort of gain the offline space, like build these hybrid spaces between the network and the the, the square. Yes. Come on, take away my matter. <laughs> Uh, um, if I have 
uh, examples of democracy as in businesses. Yes, they they a couple of startups are using democracy as their sort of their governance tool, um, but I'm not sure how it how it's working beyond my my chatting to them because I don't have access to that information. Um, another use case that it's quite interesting is student unions. Student unions are using democracy OS as well in a couple of universities. Um, so it can be used to, for whatever you want. These online seminars for community people in the main One more question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was varied. Um, we've been called communists, fascists, um, naive kids, you name it. The media was actually quite nice to us for, I don't know, why. But um, the media was actually, I mean, obviously, when you propose something like this radical, a lot of people, you know, you, obviously people make fun of you as well. Like, that was, I remember this article that said, like, oh, now we have the net party, we can now have the telephone party and the fax party. And then another piece of, of uh, another article that said that we chose our candidates using Candy Crush. On a Candy Crush competition, <laughs> which it would have been fun, <laughs> um, but um, we didn't think about it at the time. Um, but um, I guess that at the beginning, the sort of the system in general was not paying a, quite indifferent to us. We were too small. Um, when we actually went through the making of the party and running for elections and winning sort of 1.2 percent of the votes, they were like, "Okay, maybe they're not so silly as we think they are." Um, so that was a big, big validation. And we were also always very careful to say that we weren't anti-system. Like, we weren't there to throw everything, but we wanted to collaborate. Yeah. And I think that helped. And, uh, you're this and this is the of yes. We didn't say you should take, yes, you should take this into account, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought, I, I was thinking about mandatory as we do. Um, yes, absolutely. We, we, we do that a lot. Actually, one project um, was sort of passed through Congress because of democracy, a, a project that <coughs> Congress had no interest whatsoever in discussing. Um, but it got a lot of traction, it attracted a lot of the media, and so it's now it's part of the sort of legislative agenda of this year. Um, it wouldn't have happened without the democracy. So, yes, it's an effort that we make, obviously. I think, uh, I think, uh, is it? Oh, put her, uh, yeah. Yeah, she's great. So, um, Maid is our um, amazing director of communities and outreach. Um, and, yes, yes. And she is in charge of dealing with communities all around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Mm -hmm. In France. In France. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I have to get my story, just trying it out. Yeah. If we use, no, we don't, but, but it's something that might be, I mean, we did sort of short videos as intros to the legis to the pieces of legislation that we were discussing, but um, I think that doing hangouts, sort of regular hangouts, is like a really interesting sort of piece of feature to build into democracy. Yes. Um, all right. Something else? In life? Um, 
coming here, baby. Um, <laughs> blockchain, blockchain integration and liquid, liquid democracy feature, the like, like proxy vote. That's something we want. I think. And also, we're launching Democracy as Hungary next week. From Democracy OS Hungary in Budapest. Yeah. I don't know who they are. <laughs> Which is the beauty of building open source. <laughs> And that's something that we, something really interesting that interesting that we noticed in some of the bills that we discussed. We have the you can vote in favor, against, or you can abstain. And a, a lot of of times the abstention gets used a lot, which is surprising because normally in Congress abstention is not, it's not something that gets used that much. And and some of the reasons for abstention was like oh there's no there's no feasibility um, or there's no impact sort of um, study or we don't really understand how much this is going to cost. So how are you guys voting on this? Like literally comments to our uh, legislators saying like, we can't understand how you're voting on this without knowing what the economical impact will be or how, mu how, much, how, much, how much this means in terms of budget, for example. So what we found was that citizens are much more conscious of that than we expected. Uh, that's about the extent of, of, of our understanding. But um, yeah, and the abstention sort of gets used a lot. Hey! <laughs> the Red Hoodie, oh my God. Red Hoodie team. I think that's good. I thought nobody was looking at me, sorry for that. <laughs> All right, awesome. The team, how are you? Doing great. Right. So this is Sandy uh, and, and, and Meyer and um, from Buenos Aires and from San Francisco. Oh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are amazing. These guys in France are rocking it. Let me tell you. <laughs> I don't think I can say anything. Do you hear us? No. no. Yeah, but you're looking I can great. Hear, but I don't know if you're talking to me. <laughs> well, I was, but you know, I can talk to them. Yeah. We we can hear you. All right. All right. I don't mean to interrupt. No, that's fine. Um, but but maybe you can take some of the questions if you want. Because they've been grilling me for about an hour or so. So, more questions for Sandy. But he's sort of... Here comes the rest of the <laughs> He just woke up. He's like nine hours before, so... Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, very, yeah, it's very good. It's famous, 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 fam
um, about building communities. Um, that one's for Maya. Yeah. Maya is our, our community builder. Um, Maya, are you listening? No. Do, do, you, do you hear us? More or less. So sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to speak now. I don't know where to go. Okay. Um, we, when, when we started, we were thinking a lot about how to get people to the platform if you, know, you have nothing to really promise at the end. Like, you have no, um, you cannot say, well, what you are building is actually going to have that and that result. So, how do you get people to the platform, um, you know, just to, uh, to practice voting, but not actually get a complete result in mind, at least not a, not a short term one? How do you, how to give that incentive and how do you communicate? I can jump in on that question if you want. Um, when we began uh, with Democracy OS three years ago, um, in April 2012, uh, the, the main concern that we had was exactly that. Uh, we, we knew that we could do great software, we knew that we could do an application and get people on board and use it and get traction and do the typical entrepreneur startup uh, lean uh, development thing. But we were always concerned that uh, making just another online forum, making just another online platform for people to debate, uh, would just end up adding pressure to the political system, but not really changing anything. And uh, our main concern from day zero was how we can have a real impact, how we can actually not that pressure, but impact the political system. And that's why we came up with the missing component of the software. Uh, that is an offline, uh, and that is the, the 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 daring thing of building a political party, uh, and and the net party uh, was uh, was built the same at the same moment that we started developing uh, democracy OS, and the idea of the net party is a very simple idea: is is to have candidates that are committed to always vote in Congress according to democracy OS. Because we knew that we wanted Democracy OS to be a platform where any user, any citizen can feel uh, that uh, whatever input they put on this platform uh, can end up having a real impact on the political system. And uh, we thought that making a political party would be easy. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, it's certainly very, very difficult, very, very hard. Uh, we learned a lot, and especially in a very hostile environment as, a, as it is Argentina. Argentina is profoundly corrupt. Uh, we learned a lot of crazy lessons building a political party, going through a campaign. Uh, you know, the challenge of talking about uh, digital democracy to anyone, not just people like us who are young millennials and looking at the future, but uh, to the taxi driver, to, the, uh, to my aunt, to my grandmother, you know, being able to put this message <laughs> absolutely to any And um, going through that process of uh, not just doing the technology, the software, but also the political vehicle, the political institution that can make uh, those decisions binding was, was a big challenge and it's still a big challenge. Uh, I, I'm sure that we are already told you the story, but we got 1% of the votes uh, and, and, and we got to see a lot of really crazy things. We had dirty campaigning, we had spy agents following us, we had uh, been asked for bribes. Politics is a very dirty environment. But it's the kind of thing that, that you, you know, it's, 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 when you're confronted with these kinds of situations, it's the kind of thing that, say, that you know, confront you and say, well, this is the reason that we're, we need to get involved more. This is when we need to, to take action. This is the reason we need to, you know, figure out how we can bring more people on board. And, and, uh, and, and they will want to scare you from day zero. They will want to push you away uh, from, right from the beginning because uh, anybody fears a new player. Um, and it's, it's still a very big challenge. Uh, we've been very surprised in, in this last year, we have seen a lot of chapters of the Net Party, as we have seen uh, chapters of Democracy OS around the world. In Argentina, particularly, we have seen a lot of chapters of the, of the Net Party in many different provinces. And uh, these are all people that decided to, that suddenly said, it, it, enough, uh, I'm going to do something about it, and I'm going to gather my friends, my neighbors, and, and try to figure out if it's possible to start up a political party. Why not? 
Um, so that's that's the route we initially. Now, looking at the midterm in the long term, uh, and I will leave my that that she's a specialist managing communities. Uh, the, the internet is built, I heard he already talk a little bit about the blockchain, but it's generating these protocols that are about all about establishing trust online, are all about building contracts online. And uh, those can have, you know, those can, be, can have binding, uh, binding mechanisms to, to the software. And uh, as we understand how these institutions uh, are built on top of these protocols, as we understand how we can build digital institutions, I think we'll also get a much more clear idea of how we can make democracy OS a technology that it's not just quality, but also have a real impact in digital institutions of all sorts. Okay. So, right? Um, then we'll do I think that. Yeah. Go on, go on for a few minutes and then you'll, you'll say bye. <laughs> okay, go on, go on. Do you listen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, two things. I think that from a storytelling perspective, we have two challenges and we have to, to say two things. The first one is that hope is not the condition of action, but the reward of action. So. If you if you can transmit to people that hope comes after action, and then you will start uh, like defeating this problem of not having impact right now. And the second thing we have to say is that power is in action. Power is an act, but a promise or something that is not tangible. Power is action. So if you act you will be in power. If you don't, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big team. All right. It's a wrap. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> now, what's the email on how to? Democracy as friends, how do we get in touch with you? Old school, I love it. <laughs> Vive la révolution. A tout placer pour le Thank you.